Hi, I'm Courtney at womenlivingwell.org, home of Good Morning Girls. And this week, we are about to begin week one in the Making Your Home a Haven Bible Study. And so this week, we are focusing on living a life of gratitude. You know, what we focus on grows. And I can tell you that when we complain, it makes us weak. But when we live a life of thanksgiving, it makes us stronger even in our suffering. And it shouldn't really take a special holiday to remind us to give thanks because God has commanded us over and over in scriptures we see the command to give thanks. Now, I know that for myself that sometimes I just don't see all the things that I need to be thankful for. We just, we take things for granted, right? Like when my health is good, I don't thank God for my good health. And then once I'm sick, I start praying that God will make me well. And then once I'm well, then I'm thankful for my health. And so we need to be remembering to thank God, even in the good times, for all the things that he has given us. Because every good thing that we have comes from God. You know, when I was a teenager, I went on a mission trip to Mexico and my eyes were opened to how much I had at my home here in America. When I walked around and played with the children and, and saw the homes that they were living in, they were living in shanties and they had tin roofs and they had cement slabs uh, for floors. And I realized, oh my goodness, I have carpeting at home. I am so blessed. I never thought to thank the Lord for my carpeting in my house. And it took me going all the way to Mexico for my eyes to be opened, but it shouldn't require that. All we need to do is look around and see that God has generously blessed us. And so we want to live a life of thanksgiving. You know, it says in Psalms to give thanks. It is a command. It's a divine expectation. It is an offering. It is something that we are to give to God. It's not just that we're to be thankful. It's that we are to give thanks to God. You know, a little while back, there was a woman named Mary Kondo who started this series on um, cleaning out clutter, and she would talk about only keeping things that spark joy. And then as she would throw things away, she was teaching people to hold on to the item and thank the item for fulfilling its purpose in her life. And as I watched, I thought, no. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't thank the item. Thank God for giving you these things that have fulfilled a purpose in your life. We are to give thanks to God. Well, in Romans 1.21, it talks about those who are evil. And actually, it says, this is what it says. It says, for although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. God says it was evil that they were not thankful. They became fools because they would not give thanks to God. They acted as their own source, as their own sufficiency. God is the source of all good things. May we never forget that. Giving thanks changes our hearts and it is powerful. We don't want to just make lists. We want to give thanks to the Lord. Well, one of the godliest men in the Bible is Daniel. And if you remember the story of Daniel and the lion's den, then you'll remember in chapter 6 that after the edict went out in the land that said that no one was to bow down to any, any king um, but the king um, for 30 days or else they would be thrown in a lion's den, we found in Daniel chapter 6 verse 10 that Daniel's like, I'm not going to follow that. As a matter of fact, it says, it says when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had his windows and his upper chamber open so everyone could see, he got down on his knees three times a day and he prayed and he gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Daniel was so committed to prayer and giving thanks that he was willing to risk his life for it. Oh friends, that we would be this committed to our prayer lives and to our giving thanks to God daily. And then look at the posture that he had. He got down on his knees. Do others find you down on your knees in prayer? He didn't just do this once a day. He didn't just do it twice a day. Three times a day, he was down on his knees in prayer. And he, now this wasn't something that he just started when his life was in danger. No, it says that he had been previously already doing this. So this was already a habit. This was already a discipline in his life that he just continued to carry on. 
You know, we have been saved by the blood of Jesus. We have the hope of eternity. There should be no one on earth more thankful than we are as followers of Christ. So if we would be this bold, if we would be this disciplined, I think we would experience the power of God more in our lives. We see that, that Daniel was thrown in the lion's den and he didn't just have to start throwing up emergency prayers. He already had developed a prayer life where he was always talking to God. And so he was able to trust in God and God shut the mouths of the lions and he was safe. And so Daniel uh, knew the power of gratitude. Complaining will make us weak, but thankfulness will make us strong. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It doesn't say to give thanks for everything. We are not always thankful for everything that's hard, to be when we're broke or when we're sick, but he says to give thanks in everything. Think. There is always something that we can give thanks for. And you know what's hard is that when we're not giving thanks in the good times, then it's going to be really hard to give thanks during the difficult times. And so in everything, we are to be giving thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God concerning you. When you give thanks, you are in the will of God. But when we complain, we are outside the will of God. So our challenge this week is to light a candle every day in your home. And when you light that candle, say a prayer of thanksgiving. And every time you see that flicker of that candle, let it be a reminder. I challenge you to get on your knees and give thanks to God for the things that he has given you that day. I pray that we will develop a discipline like Daniel of every day, not being ashamed. We will be praying that we'll be found before the feet of God giving thanks to him so we can experience that power of God in our lives too as we make our homes a haven. Keep walking with the King.